hey welcome back to my channel i'm daniela and today we'll continue legends of tomorrow this time episode 14 of the second season in the last episode um sarah and Jax entered rip's mind and uh, managed to bring his memories back of them we also saw gideon as a human and i wouldn't mind seeing more of that and um also, apparently a piece, I think the last piece of the spear is on the moon or it will be on the moon. We'll see. Anyway, as usual, I got something to drink. The episode is ready to start. So without further ado, let's do this. The spear of destiny must be protected at all costs. Roger that, sir. I know this mission won't be easy, Commander Hayward. For me, for Betty, she'll think I died in Leipzig. Little Hank is barely a month old. The family's sacrifice might just save the world. You recognize that Hayward jawline anyway. April 13th, 1970, Mission Control works to save Apollo 13. Come on, could your grandfather get any cooler? Henry, great to see you. <laughs> Sorry, folks. He doesn't have the right credentials. We take press access very seriously around here. <laughs> uh, we're here for your fragment of the Spear of Destiny. See, there's a legion of villains who are hunting anyone who's trying to protect it. We have Stargirl's fragment, but Midnight died trying to protect his. But I hid my piece of the Spear somewhere safe. Believe me, there's no place on Earth safe from these guys. That's why it's on the moon. Exactly. There it is. You old fox, you. Sorry, fellas. Change of plans. My wife has spent the past 14 years raising our son by herself. And it is Captain Hunter's fault. The man has a wife and son, and still he asked me to abandon mine. Yeah. He doesn't have a family. I mean, he did. It's just... They were killed. I, I didn't know. What's our plan? Well, I thought that All we... right, I got Ray suiting up. He's gonna fly over there, shrink down, and let us know what's going on inside. Who's Thon? Where's Swigert? Ray, whatever you do, just don't let Thon see you. Yeah, about that. Well, what do we have here? Looks like a stowaway. Dope! Dope! Daylight, come and me want go home. Day, me say day, me say day, Come, Mr. Tallyman, tell me banana. Daylight, come on. Left six foot, seven foot, eight foot, bunch! What the hell are you two playing at? Sarah, you need it to abort. We're going to hit the meteoroids. Better rest in the command module. Yeah. Could you at least try to destroy the meteoroids rather than using my ship as a human shield? Worked before, back in 1942, you put the Wave Rider in front of the nuke and it absorbed the blast. Well, at least I had the decency to time scatter you all first. Shield integrity at 63%. 34%. I'm routing the reserve power to the shields. I'm afraid the jump ship has been critically impaired. Oh dear. I'm not awesome, Sarah. You did such a great job. If you could blast the meteorites, why didn't you do it? I, I don't understand. Why damaging the ship? <laughs> I'm Dr. Raymond Palmer, time traveler, superhero, and most recently, astronaut. It's April 13th, 1970, at 2200 hours, and I am stranded on the moon. Fuel on the LEM is close to zero. Food and water provisions were designed to last days, not months. So, yeah, I'm gonna have to sign something out of this. What are you doing? 
I'm uh, filming this for posterity, you know, in case we don't make it back. I'm not dying on the moon, right? S -s Signing off. I already have a plan. All I have to do is transfer the fuel source from my exosuit and power the fuel cells. Use the dwarf star to power the limb. Yeah, that should work. Of course, you've taken the gas spectrometer into account. Well, unless you adjust for the relative volatility of the dwarf star, then the lem could explode mid-launch. I'm a scientist from the future, and I'm here to tell you this is a two-person patch job. Look at it this way. If I'm lying, we're both dead. Henry, you need to understand how time travel works. My grandfather understands it just fine. You can't return to 1956. Maya, why? Every time we change history, we create what we call an aberration. Now, if your son grows up with you around, he could become an entirely different person. Choose a different life. That, in turn, could change Nathaniel and the person he becomes, if he's even born at all. She doesn't know that. You and I don't have a future together. What do you mean? When you stowed aboard the Wave Rider, we pulled you from the timeline. Back in 1942, you have a destiny waiting for you. How do you know all this? Ray told me. He knows your granddaughter. I don't think I should be hearing this. Ask Ray what happens to your village. Ask him what happens to your daughter and your granddaughter. Then tell me. Tell me you'll choose history over your own family. Turns out that abandoning my wife and son, even to save the world, was a mistake. Ah, it's the great irony of time travel. But despite it, we still find ourselves living with regret. One of mine is that I couldn't find a better way to protect the spear. One that would have spared you such a personal sacrifice. Rip has such a nice voice. I don't know why I realized just now. You and I have more in common than you think. Pass me the pliers. We're both scientists. We're both obsessed with achieving the impossible. You dedicated your life to learning how to shrink yourself down to the size of an atom, and I spent mine learning the secrets of the Speed Force. I became the atom to help people. You could use the dwarf star in your exosuit to power an entire city, but instead, you chose to become the atom because you weren't satisfied with your small, pathetic life. seem happy, Professor. The intercept might have been a success, but the Wave Rider is on reserve power, not to mention the difficulty of re-entering the Earth's atmosphere. What are you saying? I'm saying that our crew has an infinitesimal chance of ever returning home. Nate, you there? Yeah, Nick, what's up? There's some kid in Mission Control calling himself Hank Haywood. That's your son. I fixed an essay writing contest so Hank would win. I should have told you earlier. I had to meet him. 38 degrees. You don't even know my question. At what angle do we need to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere? 38 degrees. I'm from the 22nd century. I learned astro-navigation in grade school. 38 degrees. I We're like every time the Earth reports flash on the screen, you can hear his that sound when he vibrates. Thorn. He wants to get back to Earth. Same as the rest of us. So that he can kill us when we land. I'm with Amaya, grudgingly. I don't trust him. Exactly, when you land. <sighs> so it's right. What's the point? You're never gonna land because you're afraid that he's gonna kill you? Check. Right, there should be a lever to your, uh, to your left. I see it. So you're gonna die. Hey! 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 Don't! Don't do this! 
I am so sorry, Nathaniel. No, no, you will open that door. The explosive decompression will suck you out. If I don't, you will all die. I can do it. Let me do it. I have powers no, now. No, I won't let you risk your life. Funny thing about Rip Hunter's anti-speedster weapons. I invented them. I knew you'd escape. You're on the run. Because you're a time remnant. Speak of the devil. Well, I guess you won't have time to search the ship for the spear now, will you? Till we meet again, Raymond. I'm in here trying to figure out what my place is. If I'm not this team's captain. So you're saying you don't fit in? You're an outcast? A misfit? Let's assume. Sounds to me like you're a legend. Gideon, I need you to help me with something. Of course, Miss Jiwei. I need you to show me the historical record on Zambezi. Oh, here we go again. You're asking for me to show you your future. I must counsel you against doing this. Please, Gideon. I don't know what was all that about um, Sarah, you know, letting the um, the wave rider getting hit when apparently she could have at least tried to destroy some of them if not all but at least some of them and then less of them would have hit the wave rider and maybe the shield wouldn't have been like completely destroyed and maybe the jump ship would have been somewhat okay so like oh my now uh, so her future and I don't know why but I feel that in the next episode or in some episode uh, she is gonna try to save her village that's gonna be great in a way I'm kind of tired of someone trying to change the past rip is of course feeling out of place um i guess sarah is doing a pretty good job but since rip came back she was like no i have to do this i'm the captain no i have to do this i'm the captain no i'll do it i'm the captain uh just shoved captain in my face for the last two episodes and yes i get it she's the new captain and i don't know it's a bit of a little too much for me uh, but i mean it is what it is yeah i guess this is all i have to say about this episode thank you for watching i hope you enjoy and i will see you next time bye